Spirit Butterfly with Farasha Ka, and you are watching Brandon's Corner. Episode of Brandon's Corner. I want you all to always remember your dreams can become reality, okay? I have a special, wonderful guest here with me today. She is a mother, she's a hairstylist, she's an actor, she is an entrepreneur of her own product entitled Bashaka, and she's here with me today. She's the epitome of what a powerful black woman is. All right. I introduce you all today, Miss Spirit Butterfly. How you doing today, Spirit? I'm excellent. Thank you so much, Brandon, for You're that welcome. wonderful You're introduction. Welcome. So you know, today is the day. We don't hold nothing back. We just be real here, okay? Yes. Because we want to encourage as many people as we can encourage, okay? Yes. So the first question I want to ask you is, how did you get your name, Spirit Butterfly? Spirit Butterfly was actually a name that was given to me at a naming ceremony. So it ties into the Native American, and uh, this year marks 10 years that oh, I wow. have been utilizing spirit. So spirit, we know, is the unseen that comes into the scene, and butterfly is a symbol of transformation. So it's oh, a spiritual wow. transformation. Oh, wow. That's amazing. amazing. Thank you. So what was, and I'd like to ask this question, because childhood has a lot to do with the way that we grow up. It has a lot to do with the, the decision that we made. Yes. What was childhood like for you? Wow. Childhood, uh, for the most part, was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I w I'm a military child, okay. so I traveled a lot um, growing up. Um, I'm a grandparent baby, so I got mostly anything I want. I'm a daddy's girl, <laughs> so... <laughs> oh. <Wow. laughs> yeah, I'm... Um, very entertaining. I, I I I have a wonderful childhood. I really did, and I'm so thankful. Okay, great, yeah. great. Well, I'm glad to get. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So let me tell you, because I know you do some things in the, in the music, entertainment industry, and we know that um, Atlanta can be very bootleg at times when it comes to the industry. <laughs> yes. How has the industry been treating you so far? Oh wow, the industry gives to me what I put in. Okay. So the level of enthusiasm and energy that I have put in has come back to me. So I, I really can't say the energy has uh, the industry has mm -hmm. done some, anything to me or how they treated me. It's how I allowed myself to be seen and dealt with in the industry. Okay, okay. And can you go into more depth with that? When you said it's how you allow yourself to be seen, or what, yes. what do you mean by that? Um, my passion, because I believe in taking my own time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I take roles and um, opportunities in relation to what I'm doing. So I may work with someone and then I may not be on the scene for five months, but for the most part, people who stay and, and do some things and leave and come back, a lot of times they're forgotten, but if you make good connections, anytime you come in, you're welcome. So I've always been welcomed in what I love to do. Great, 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 great. So what are some struggles that you've endured in the, in the entertainment industry? What are some of the struggles that I've endured in the entertainment industry? Um, some of the struggles that were challenges I believe I endured um, was basically uh, making sure that I put myself first okay. because a lot of times um, this industry we know um, feeds on people who do not have their own mind. Mm -hmm. So um, because I'm a passionate person and I speak up a lot of times, um, that has uh, uh, basically, uh, what's the word, um, caused me to be appeared in a light to where it's either you deal with me or you don't, opposed mm -hmm. to they'll take someone else and work with them because they can do whatever they want to do So it's like pretty much like, um, I guess you're saying you won't sell your soul or sell who you are as a person or compromise yourself to be able to get fame or to be able to to be big and interesting. Yeah, that's a lot yes. of what you see. You know, I don't know if you heard yes. about like Monique and what she said was going on with her about how she's been blackballed and all that. Yes. Yeah. It, it, that's a lot of what you do see as an industry. So right. Completely understandable. So let's talk about the hair industry, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so what started you to wanting to do hair? Hair's always been a passion. I remember uh, my grandparents, my mom, 
my auntie's uh, standing over me at the age of three in admiration. How does she know how to braid like that? <laughs> uh, I had over hundreds of dolls because I just wanted to braid and do hair. Wow. And people saw that, so they pushed that in me. You know, they pushed that out of me. Um, so where I was working in shops doing hair without a license, to be honest with you, while I was still in high school. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Uh, that's what started. Just me wanting to make people feel good, seeing women's confidence. They'll go in something spirit defeating, but when you talk to them and you train, they transform them in a way to where they feel that they look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that's all a woman needs to mm -hmm. conquer the world? That's right. Some some other woman to give her confidence, and then another woman to pamper her and make her look good. That's all she needs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get into this. So what are some advice you would give to young ladies out there that want to be hairstylists? If they're just getting started in the industry, what's some advice you would give to them? Well, basically, um, connect with people with like minds, mm -hmm. number one. Because if you don't surround yourself with people who have your vision or higher, you will go down. Wow. They will drain you. Um, number two is do not listen to what people say you can't do. I was told that because I do not have a license uh, at to work as a stylist that I would not be taken seriously. I have worked on set. I have worked in hair shows wow. and everything imaginable without a license. So if I can do it, just imagine what anyone can do, mm -hmm. you know? All right. So being in the industry... What are some games that you've seen played, like some tricks that a lot of people need to watch for? Um, well, we all know about that uh, one thing that's called, um, what is it when you see somebody else do a creation uh -huh. and you take it as your own and claim it? <laughs> yes, I have plenty of images online from multiple places all around the country what? that women say that they did this hairstyle that I did with my client. Oh, wow. And um, I had to at one time copyright or put my name on it because it became a really big thing. But um, other than that, it's a lot of clicky in the industry, the hair industry is real clicked up. Mm -hmm. And um, a little bit of the shystiness that I see is uh, um, when someone wants to go out there, a woman, and you have other women that have been in the industry for a long time, it is true, a lot of times the women that's been in the industry give that up and come in a hard time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for whatever reason, I see a lot of that, not only in the hair industry, but just as with black women, period. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's one of the things that needs to be changed. Wow. Making it hard for your fellow younger sister because you feel like she needs to do things that you should have done or because you had to work hard, she needs to too. Everyone's life path is not the same. What takes one person two years can take a other person two weeks. The, is that other person wrong? Because their passion and energy uh, put them in a position that is the same place where somebody's been working quote unquote hard for years, you know? Right. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that's really interesting. And, you know, if somebody, because I know there's a lot of women that come in and they're trying to get their name out there, they're trying to get known, and they're wondering, like, how can I get known? What is some advice? Like, what's some avenues? What's the best way to get yourself known in the industry? Okay, best way to get yourself known in the industry. I'm going to tell you to do what I've done. And what I've yeah. done is use all free markets available. Mm -hmm. uh, social media. We are in a digital age. Um, use social media, you know, to promote your work. Um, Put yourself out there. Don't if you know that uh, a place or a person is going to uh, help you out, be there. You know, show up, show yourself approved, and let them know that you take what you do seriously. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, these women say, "Oh, I'm this. Or I want to do this and that." But when given the opportunity, they're either late. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when they're put on that platform, they don't show the enthusiasm. You have to act as if it's your first time wow. in everything that you do. That's how you make it great. Wow. So you got to act like it's your first time. Yes. So you can't get too cocky or lapsadaisical thinking that 
wow, that's something yes. really big to think about. I think that's something that people can really take, you know. Yeah. Every time you on board and like it's your first time to make yeah. sure, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So I heard that you were working in the Madam C.J. Walker Hat Museum. How's that experience been? Um, working at the Madam C.J. Walker Museum and Salon was a wonderful experience mm -hmm. for me. I learned so much. And actually, when I worked there, my chair, my station was right up under her image. Oh, wow. So I felt like she was passing the <laughs> baton to me. Like, you know, uh, I felt her presence, her energy, and just learning about her. And believe it or not, um, one of the first black radio stations um, was above the building. So it has so much history there. I learned so much. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's what are some avenues? Like, I know a lot of women are wondering how can they uh, market their products and whatnot. What are some avenues that you use that's been very successful to you in marketing your product? Yes, again, social media. Uh -huh. um, showing up. Okay. Uh, if you, even if you have to do the old school, like we, we did, you know, street teams. I don't think they know about the street teams, <laughs> but we had a whole bunch of posters, business cards, and we would go in groups of 10 and just push it. Push it. Show, put yourselves in people's faces. Mm -hmm. Say, this is who I am and this is what I want to do. And have something tangible so that they take you seriously. Wow, wow, wow. All right, so that's your product for Rashika, okay? Yeah. So I want to know, you know, what made you come up with the product? Well, how did you get the idea for it? Okay, so, well, for Rasha, if everyone knows, it's butterfly in Arabic. Oh, wow. And Ka is spirit and comedic. So what I did was combine butterfly and spirit. Mm -hmm. So all of your ancient um, languages read from the right to the left. Okay. So what I wanted to do was get us back into a program of a mentality that would spark higher realities. Wow. So I chose to yeah. name my product for Rasha Kaba, it's Butterfly Spirit, but if you read how we used to read, which they call dyslexia, mm -hmm. but it's only in the Western civilized uh, civilization because a lot of people, including Africa, still mm -hmm. write or read from right to left. So wow. spirit, butterfly. So that's what dyslexia is, is that when they call dyslexia, somebody reads from the... What dyslexia is uh, when someone uh, reads or look at things from the right to the left. Wow. I so, never knew that. Yes. So they say the right way is the left to the right. Like you write from the left to the right, you read from the left to the right. That is actually dyslexia. Oh. And we were taught backwards. So a lot of this might just be some of my ancestors. Yes. And then some people then they're saying this is issues. Well that's something really yes. big to think about, okay. Mm -hmm. What are some actual uses for Farashika? Ooh, Farashika has so many wonderful uses. So it's an excellent moisturizer. Okay. It's an excellent conditioner. Mine will remind you that every ingredient in the product is so organic that you can digest it. Oh wow. Yes, you can cook with it. Okay. Uh, you can put it on your salad. <clears throat> it's an excellent lubricant. <laughs> um, it's a healing oil. Okay. Um, it's a hot oil treatment. You mm -hmm. girls that like to go in the shower and put that conditioner in your hair and that uh, uh, oil on your hair and sit in the dryer, you would want to use for Rasha Ka because it penetrates deep into the scalp and pores and it stimulates the inside. Your pores receive oil. Mm -hmm more than any solid and when your hair when your skin is wet or your hair it receives it faster yeah. and i know like for people like me that deal with eczema what's yes. what what use is like is it a good product for that type of okay it's excellent for eczema psoriasis dandruff mm -hmm. and alopecia any mal condition of the skin or scalp it treats it wow yes wow so where can we get this product from you can order it um, online uh, through Square Marketplace um, for Rasha Ka. Uh, it will also be available on my website at uh, the end of August. And uh, you can purchase it through most of my social media. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Great, yeah. great, great. Okay. So what are some new projects? Like, what, what are we seeing for Spirit in the future? Wow. Well, um, I just wrapped up for Rasha Ka's first commercial. 
so uh, that will be promoted. Uh, Farashika has ventured out into clothing, oh, wow. so we have an apparel line like the one you see here. <laughs> um, it comes in women and men's sizes. Um, basically, this is a movement, so it's not just about wearing a shirt that has symbols on it. These symbols actually channel levels within your mind to tap into higher realities. So my goal when you wear this shirt is for you to remember how great you are. When you see the pyramid shape, which is our symbol that was changed for negative, but this is actually a geometric symbol that is stamped in this realm that has very beneficial potentiality. That's why most of your companies you see has the pyramid because this is a sign, a symbol that has um, esoteric, spiritual meaning behind it. So anyone can take this symbol and depending on their intentions will manifest in this realm. They know that. We need to know that. The sun, the green sun that you see on our Farashika symbols represents the black sun. And the black sun is the sun that you cannot see behind the sun. Okay. It's the energy that basically makes everything happen in this physical realm. Um, so when you look at these symbols and you know these meanings, it channels things within you to better yourself, mm -hmm. to want to eat right, to want to do right, to want to treat your fellow men right. Because if we're looking at basically a walk in higher symbology, we will look at each other as the symbol of ourselves. So if you respect yourself, you respect each other. I see that for Rasha Khan. That's right. I am a powerful man. I mm -hmm. am a powerful woman. So we're basically rising our minds back up to clean this mess that we see because. It, t it takes us. No one else is going to do the work except for us. Wow. Wow. I think that's something very important to think about, especially when it comes to, you know, slavery and us being taken out of our, our realm. You know, I said yes. that um, a lot of us don't know who we really are, and I think we need to learn. And that's a great thing that you're doing with, Thank you know, you. making that happen. You're welcome. Thank you. So I want to play a little game with you, okay? I know that okay. you, you're a hairstylist, so I, I know am. that the 90s was your period. <laughs> I'm an 80s baby, but I grew up in the 90s. Yes, I did. Yeah. So I just want to talk about some hairstyles, and you can say, and this is the game's called Yay or Nay, okay? Oh. So basically, <laughs> I think I like this song. <laughs> basically, whether or not you know if this hairstyle would make it, to, would you bring it back? If oh, you could bring it back, if okay. I could bring it back. So if you can bring it back, it's a yay. If he's like, keep it where it's at, it's a nay. Okay. okay. Right. And we're being, I just want to say, we're being honest. We're being honest. Okay. <laughs> First style, the short crop do. Yay or nay? That short crop do? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no. No. And why not? Because it looked like somebody just put something on top of her head. I'm going to need it to be formed to her face. Okay? All right. Oh. Box braids. That's what you got right there. Beautiful, magnificent. <laughs> yes. The platinum blonde. See, it's a... It's a <laughs> I want to see black women. We're so creative and we want to express ourselves. We wear multiple colors, but because I'm into the natural, and most black women don't grow blonde hair naturally out their head, <laughs> and it's in the image of something else. And in the words of the late great Whitney Houston, hell to the now. <laughs> I hear that one. Micro braids. Micro braids are good because it gives you a lot of uh, variety. However, most people who put in micro braids, they don't get micro braids again. You want to know why? Oh, because they have no hair to do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, especially them edges. Oh, wow. Yes. So, micro braids, no. No. <laughs> finger waves. Yes. <laughs> I love you a good finger wave, honey. How about the Alita swoop dude with the swoop? I love Alita. The swoop, everybody has, excuse me. <laughs> You're so funny. Everybody had their swoop. swoop. <laughs> everyone, let me say, everyone thought that they were Aaliyah when she uh -huh. came out. I think that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, yes, bring it back, yes. But only if you have hair. I don't need a swoop, but I can still see your eyes. <laughs> I need you to get that little thing for Rashika. 
<laughs> and gets it to get well, the going go back. back. <laughs> yes, it will. Yes, it will. Farasha, Farasha Khan. Khan. <laughs> the baby, huh? Yes. <laughs> um, however, some baby hairs. <laughs> I don't need you to grab hair from the back, back. and bring it forward and then do that because then I'm a no. thief. No, I don't need that's not baby hair. That's full of grown damaged split ends that needs to be cut off. Well now we know the difference between split ends split and baby ends hair. And baby hair, yes. The baby hair is, is regardless if you put gel on it, it'll still look like a baby. Baby hair oh on my yes. yes, beautiful. Yes. Sock bun, the bun in the back. Oh, I think that's pretty. That's classy. <laughs> the nice bun in the back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your mother, um, the mushroom. The T-Bars mushroom. I think T-Bars, she pulled it off good. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it coming back like last year, mm -hmm. the mushroom. Uh, that's a nice, yeah. Nice yeah, that's a nice too. I yeah. like that. Sleep perm. Okay, this is the thing. <laughs> so, with me being natural, I get it that black women want to wear multiple things mm -hmm. for their hair. But my thing is, if you have this long Brazilian that's 19 inches to 25, and the roots look as if uh, it's not blended correctly... <laughs> I have an issue with that. And you don't have to wear that constantly. You don't have to wear your that bone straight hair because mm -hmm. that's not you, mm -hmm. you know? I get that maybe your work. I know a lot of us in the entertainment industry, we have to wear those sew-ins because it protects our hair, hair. like with mm -hmm. me with braids. You know, it's just when you constantly wear it and wear it, it damages your it hair. Damages your hair. Mm -hmm. And then to me, I feel like you're trying to look like something that you're not. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. The French roll. I love the French roll. <laughs> I love that. It's, uh, yeah, especially when in the 93, they had the French, the French roll in the back and the finger waves on the side yeah. with that long piece <laughs> yeah. hanging like this. Yeah, I, I lived for I've that. I've always said that the French roll is a stylish shit and never went out style. Like, yes, yeah, it's so it, it, classy. It classy. You can wear it with any type mm -hmm. of style. If, if you showed the woman's face, right. it was an updo. Yes, I love that. And then last but not least, the crinkle. What's the crinkle? You know when the women crinkle their hair. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's an old that's school Ooh. You know what? It's you it's uh, every woman that I remember seeing that on, mm -hmm. they had hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it was thick, they had a French roll mm -hmm. and that on the side, or they had that. I think I like that. That's mm -hmm. pretty. Great, Let great. that come back. <laughs> yeah. Great, great, great. So you got spirits, old rundown on what hairstyle should stay. Which hairstyle should come back? I think y'all need to listen to, to the expert right here, okay? Yes. So, spirit. Yes. You want to do it? Oh. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my colleagues are telling me that I'm not showing the shirt all the way. So, let me turn <laughs> it so, so you can see Parashaka. Parashaka, go get you some, okay? Yes. The spirit of Farashika. Oh, oh, a spirit of constant change. The spirit of constant change. Yes, that's our slogan with Farashika. All right, spirit of constant change. It's a, a, a state of constant change. Gotcha. A state of constant being. <laughs> I apologize. All right, so what are some hashtags? What are some places that they can find you? Hashtag spirit butterfly. Mm -hmm. Has, hashtag Farashika. Hashtag Farashika mm -hmm. apparel. Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube page, The Spirit Butterfly, and of course, my website, thespiritbutterfly.com. All right, all right, there you have it, Miss Spirit Butterfly. As I said before, you all always remember your dreams can become reality. Just because you're struggling, just because you're going through, don't mean it's not happening. Just keep pushing, all right? We out. Peace. Thank you so much. It is more than a look. It is a feeling deep down. As the founder and creative director of Farashika, including Farashika Crystal Series, I, Spirit Butterfly, am elated to bring forth Farashika Apparel. For Russia, K.
car apparel, a state of constant being. Go to our website, click the PayPal link to place your orders now. You too can become a part of the Farashika Apparel Legacy. <laughs> y'all real quick agape love is an unconditional love it's a love that sees beyond the outer surface and accepts the love for who yo, they are yo i just want that agape love never falls down no one's stopping us always and forever man that